Hello, I am Dursun Delen. I created this short video to introduce you to an exceptionally good tool for data science for business analytics called NIME. I've been using it for teaching purposes for quite a few years now, and I'm enjoying it every time that I actually use it. So as far as the um, the uh, the content that I'm going to cover is concerned. Um, I'm going to tell you why I use NIME. Why should you consider NIME for your data science, for your business analytics projects, for learning, for teaching, for professional engagement? And I'll show you how you can find and install NIME uh, very briefly. Uh, I'll show you what's in the NIME graphical user interface. As you will see, it's visually very appealing software tool. I'll show you what a workflow pipeline is in NIME and how you would actually construct a pipeline, a logical flow of progression from data to knowledge using nodes and components. Um, I'll show you where you can find some training uh, material. How do you actually train and test models that you develop? How do you deploy models? And then uh, I'll tell you a little bit about NIME Hub, where there's invaluable knowledge that you can gain, examples and people who help you solve your specific problems uh, related to your, uh, your analytics projects. Most of the content that I cover comes from some of the books, some of which I actually co-authored, um, listed here. These are very recently published books that are uh, referencing to NIME as a analytics platform, as an application platform to turn those analytics machine learning concepts into uh, smart models for smarter, better decision making. These are my top 10 lists. Um, why I choose NIME and what, why you should consider NIME. The, 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 the top of the list is that it's free. You don't have to deal with the cost related issues. Uh, it's open source. You can actually enhance the code the functionality and create your own nodes, your own functions from within this graphical interface. It's platform agnostic, it runs on uh, Microsoft, it runs on Apple, it runs on Linux natively, not artificially. Uh, it has rich functionality. It has over 2,000 native nodes that comes with the initial install. And then there's probably as many, if not more, nodes created by the community and made available to anyone and everyone to download and, and, and make available within the NIME platform as extensions. It connects to pretty much any data source, uh, local data sources, cloud-based, internet-based data sources, relational databases to flat files. It's modular in a way that you can actually use very low level granular nodes, or you can combine them into components and use them at a higher level for ease of functionality purposes. For instance, if you built your best practice of how to pre-process data, you can create a component and you can reuse that component that has multiple models as sub workflow within it in many projects from that point forward. Um, there's a huge community behind it because it's open source, the whole world, so to speak, is working to make it perfect. Uh, similar to R and Python projects, this is also supported by, by a very large um, community. It's ex expandable, meaning that you don't have to limit your model building to what NIME environment has as far as the nodes are concerned. You can actually consume functionality of other tools, other software, and other programming languages. NIME actually has plenty of nodes that you can use to consume Python and R code from within uh, NIME workflow. It's very easy to deploy uh, both locally and, and, and over the internet on, on the cloud platform. You can use um, servers, the cloud platform that NIME actually provides to enterprises. That's where NIME actually makes its money, the, the cloud platform. Uh, or you can actually uh, deploy it on your own uh, cloud platform, AWS, Azure, the others, um, so that you would have a private ownership over your NIME deployment. 
So the models that are deployed on cloud, you can plug them into your decision-making processes so that the models can be automatically managed at the cloud, whereas the decisions locally can be made using the latest and greatest models developed by the latest data pushed into this cloud platform. It's very, very easy to use. It's graphically intuitive, um, more than any other tool that I've had in the market. I've been doing analytics for over 30 years. Yes, the name was not analytics back then, but what we did uh, in late 1980s, 90s, 2000, 2010, beyond, up until now, it has always been turning data into information, into knowledge, into actionable insight. And that's exactly uh, what analytics actually stand for. So I've been doing it for 30 years. I used literally every tool, graphical, programming-based tool in the marketplace. The one that I've been using for the last uh, six, seven years is Nine. Nine for teaching, Nine for my research, Nine for my professional engagement for my consultancy projects. I love it. When I need to, I can always plug in a little bit of Python, a little bit of R, a little bit of JavaScript to enhance my modeling uh, so that I can enhance the capabilities for a specific task within a specific project. But by and large, everything else that I do is within a workflow in Nine. If you want to check it out, and I think you should, all you have to do is go to Nine.org or Nine.com upper right corner, click on download, put in your information, and download the version that resonates to your operating system, either Microsoft, Apple, or Linux. Once you download and start NIME, the first time you start it, it will show you uh, where to store your models, your workflows, your workbooks. And then I usually go with what uh, NIME actually picks for me under my username. Um, it actually creates a specific folder, and that's where, in a very intuitive folder structure, it uh, stores and maintains the models that I actually built. If you use a lot of extensions, and I actually did on the you know low right corner, you will see um, those extensions will be loaded when you're loading Nime for the first time uh, in your um, analytics, the modeling. Uh, uh, process. This is how the graphical user interface looks like. It's, it's quite intuitive. On the upper uh, left corner, you have your NIME Explorer. That's where your local models, your cloud-based models, and examples provided by NIME on the cloud uh, will be sitting and waiting for you to consume. Uh, the middle of that column, the left column, there's a workflow coach. So this like statistics based, which node should you use or you are more likely to use while building this pipeline. So it actually uses the community experience as well as your own model building experience to suggest which nodes might or should come next. Um, below that is your gold mine, the node repository. That's where all the functions, all the nodes, all the graphical uh, units are. Behind those graphical nodes, the, the illustrations, there is, there is uh, mathematical algorithmic functions that does something with the data to take the input and turn it into the output. And then on the right-hand side, at the top, you have the description of the node that you selected. Below that, you have a direct connection to NIME Hub. That's the Community Information Knowledge Exchange Hub. You can do searches. You can find new nodes, new components, new workflows. Uh, similar to what you are about to do. So you don't start from scratch, but start from somebody else's experience to build on. In the middle, you have the workflow editor. That's where you either drag from the workflow coach or node repository the nodes, the functions, to connect them together with pipe creating pipelines that takes the data on the left-hand side and produce the knowledge on the rightmost side. You can use embellishments, the textual descriptions within this explorer so it is more informative to third parties if they were to look to understand what it is that you did and how you did it. I love it because it gives me the opportunity to graphically show the logical flow from the raw material, the data, 
to my products, insight that I need to use to make smarter, better decisions in any problem situation. And then each of those notes, if you double click on it, it will give you all kinds of options to customize it to your own needs. They usually come with the default settings, but oftentimes, when you know what you're doing, you will set those parameters to your own needs, to your own liking based on the project that, that you're involved in. Notes looks similar to this. So on the left-hand side, you have the input ports. On the right-hand side, you have the output ports. There could be one or more input ports or none input ports. There could be one or more or none output ports. At the bottom of each node, there's this uh, traffic light analogy. If the node is just dropped onto the workflow developer, uh, it will have a red light, meaning that it needs configuration. Once you configure the parameters, it will turn into yellow. Once you execute it, it will turn into uh, green. If there's an error in the way that you actually define the parameters of the node, it will actually give you a visual indication of that as well. So you connect these uh, nodes to one another by dragging and dropping from the output port into the input port. And as you actually do that, the information from the source node is propagated automatically to the destination node. This is how you drag and drop and create your own workflows. Uh, very, very intuitive, as I said. The, the, even the graphical images are, are quite descriptive as to what that node actually does. As I said, there's a description of it when you select it on your workflow. On the upper right corner, it will tell you what the node does, what kind of algorithm it implements, in which academic or otherwise sources the algorithm has been borrowed uh, or taken from. There are different ports that indicate different inputs and outputs. For instance, this uh, block triangle is data ports. So data comes in, data comes out. Uh, the square blue is the model inputs and outputs. There is also red squares that shows database connections or database data, depending upon the, the color, the shape, uh, and the form of the, the, the ports. It actually gives you visual indication what kind of inputs and outputs are either ingested or produced by a specific node. Most nodes will require some kind of configuration. It will come with some default settings, but more than likely, you will have to make sure that all those settings are properly selected or make minor changes so that the data is processed on the left-hand side. And for instance, a decision tree algorithm is configured properly to your own liking, to your own project-related specifics before you move forward on executing the node. To be able to execute a node, you can right-click, you know, look at the context menu and say execute. You can go to the top uh, menu bar to execute, or um, you can just execute the whole workflow by double by clicking on the two green arrows on the, uh, on the toolbar, as you can see in the, in the graphics there. Um, if it uh, completes the execution properly, there is no uh, this red access uh, that you will see in the workflow. If not, you will see some of those that requires your attention to go in there and, and make adjustments and fixes before the whole workflow can be run and executed successfully. <clears throat> as far as the deployment, once you build your model, once you're happy the way that it does what it does, you can deploy it on the, the NIME server, either a private server of yours or the server that you can actually uh, rent from NIME. Um, and then you can connect the real data into your model, and then you can tie the model output into your business processes for smarter, better data-driven, evidence-based decision-making purposes. The hub is your invaluable resource. When you go there, when you do searches, you don't just find answers to questions, but also you find nodes, you find components, you find uh, full-fledged workflows that actually does what it is that you're trying to do. So you can basically take it from the hub, literally drag it from the hub, drop it onto your Alnix uh, platform, nine ounce platform, and it will keep functioning uh, for you. So you can change a few specifications of it and make it your own. 
In addition to Hub, you can also check out the forum where there is question and answer amongst the members of the community. You will see there's uh, several dedicated Naim gurus uh, answering questions in a very timely fashion. One thing invaluable source that you need to check out is the Naim example server. So when you install Naim on the upper left corner, there is a section, there is a file um, a folder structure under the name of examples. If you double click on it, it will connect to the cloud and it will show you all kinds of examples categorized into different folders that you can reuse. You can learn from and you can save it as, make it your own so that you can actually create the local copy of it and then make changes, maybe change the data to your own data, keep rest everything else and run the model on your own data to get the results. All of those are possible, uh, easy to consume resources on Lime platform. So uh, in a follow-up video, I will show you a short demonstration as to how you can use uh, Lime, how you can do the things that I mentioned to you that you can easily do. You will see it's very intuitive. If you don't have patience and you want to get started, just download and start playing with Lime. You will love it as I did in the last quite a few years. And I'm, again, using it for teaching, for learning, for research, for consultancy, for anything and everything. NIME has become my core uh, analytics tool. Thank you for listening.